I was a normal young boy, uh, 18 years old. Uh, my plans were to, to, to study architecture or something like that. And at, at the, 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 the best moment in my life, at the end of 20th century, something unacceptable happened to us. In 1992, Zdrbin Muzic was interned in Ternopoli concentration camp in Priador in northern Bosnia. He, like many others, has come to the Tomasica mass grave, less than 20 kilometers from where he was detained, to look for the remains of relatives lost in the war. The International Commission for Missing Persons are confident they have found one of the largest mass graves from the deadly conflict that gripped the former Yugoslavia in the 1990s. As of late November, the bodies of over 400 victims of ethnic killings have been found at the Tomasica site. The shocking new discovery is hoped to yield vital evidence for investigators examining crimes committed during the Bosnian war. This shocks me, it horrifies me, but it doesn't I'm afraid, surprise me. There were terrible deeds done on all sides. The vast majority, the greatest weight of these, were indeed crimes committed by the Serbs against the Bosniak Muslim population. But I have to say that all sides did bad things to everybody. Uh, and I suspect there is much more yet still hidden. The majority of, of, uh, of the bodies are uh, buried here after the action of ethnically cleansing of the left bank of Sanari. This is on a part of Priedor, uh, which was settled by the Bosniaks and Croats. And this action where more than 1,700 persons killed in only three days. So after, the, uh, after that action, I, which, uh, where I survived, uh, I was... Uh, I become a uh, concentration camp detainee with my younger brother. My neighbor, Hava Tatarevich, she lost her six sons and husband in two minutes. As the secretary of Priador 92, an NGO that supports families of former concentration camp detainees, his daily job is to liaise between forensic teams and community members. I was two days before here and my neighbor, Hassan, was exhumated. They found their do documents in, in a jacket and uh, it was a per identify, uh, identity card and inside was uh, the, the picture of his wife and, uh, and kid. Two hours later, I went to downtown to city center. I met his mom. She asked me, uh, should be need something new? And I answered it, no, Shuhra, nothing's new. It was too hard for me. The ethno-religious conflict that ripped through Bosnia at the end of the 20th century is thought to have cost more than 100,000 lives. Over one million people fled the country and thousands were internally displaced. Many Bosnian Muslims or Bosniaks settled overseas without knowing where their relatives lay buried. Hundreds over the past months have arrived to Tomasica from Australia, the United States and other parts of Europe in the hope they will be able to put their loved ones to rest. Selima Gazibara has travelled from Sweden, hoping to find the remains of her late husband. Be 
Vi körde runt i byarna och frågade. Rumors about the existence of a mass grave in the Tomashitsa mining site have persisted since 1992. A 1996 report on Swedish state TV claimed that local residents had seen trucks entering the area carrying bodies and leaving empty. The recent discovery appears to confirm their accounts. So far we, we, we found uh, some evidence which indicates that people were uh, thrown up from trucks were uh, that people were carried in blankets. Also, we we, we found a number of shell cases, which indicates that this wasn't just a place of uh, mass grave, but it was a place of execution as well. For over 10 years, forensic experts have known this to be the site of a series of mass graves. But in the absence of witnesses who would disclose its exact location, they were not allowed to begin excavation works. The uh, investigators uh, which are uh, searching for uh, uh, human remains and mass graves uh, have had information about uh, this mass grave in Tomasica but because of vast majority of uh, space, uh, they couldn't pinpoint the mass grave. Questions are still being asked as to why it took so long for witnesses to come forward, particularly considering the proximity of a small hamlet of Serbian houses only 100 metres away. As you see, they are so close, they're so close to, to the, such a horrible place. It is, Unexplainable. But secrets are hard to keep. It was a former Serb soldier, originally part of the team tasked with hiding the bodies, who came forward in April, revealing the location of the site. In late November, he committed suicide. The International Commission on Missing Persons was established in 1996 at the behest of then American President Bill Clinton with the intention of recovering the missing victims of the war, thought to be over 30,000 in Bosnia alone. Between 8 and 10,000 people are still missing. The Dayton Peace Agreement of 1996 allowed the recognition of two semi-autonomous regions in the country. The Federation of Bosnia and Herzegovina, inhabited primarily by Bosniaks and Croats, and the Serb-dominated Republika Srpska. We are here to join peace efforts in bringing peace to the Balkans basically gave the Serb nationalists a lot of what they wanted, namely a sort of control of half of Bosnia, almost half of Bosnia, and their own entity, essentially, ethnically, ethnically pure. I don't think you could have had a, a peace, albeit a very untidy peace, without Dayton. It made compromises that have to be made, and I know of no person, particularly no person in Bosnia who suffered under that terrible war, who would not have preferred an untidy peace uh, than a continuing war. But the reality of it is that if Bosnia and Herzegovina is to make progress towards the only future of peace that it can have, which is part of the European Union, it has to move beyond Dayton and create the structures of, the structures of a functional state. Over the past 10 years, many of those who fled during the conflict began making their painful journey home, only to find a country they no longer recognised. Bosnia, now officially divided along ethnic lines, many found themselves to be part of a new, unwelcomed minority. Actually, I, I belong to one new community in Bosnia, it's kind of, uh, no man's people, returnees, people who, who came back after this disaster. I was actually happy enough to survive, not to be exhumated here. 
But I am feeling myself as someone who is, who don't have a right to stay here after so many years of discrimination. There are now in high-ranking positions in the Serb government of Republika Srpska those who would wish to deny that these things ever happened. That is, I think, shocking on a human term. And insofar as they are following that policy in order to recreate the climate of the war, it stands directly against Bosnia and Herzegovina's future. They keep saying that we left voluntarily. You know, uh, they don't call the camps by their name. They don't call them concentration camps. They, they call them investigation centers. Uh, you know, they use different kinds of euphemisms. In the region of Priador, where this grave has been found, it has been determined that Serb forces were responsible for most of the deaths, as they forced out Croats and Muslims. A UN report, which compares figures from the 1991 official census with a population count dating 1993, shows a decrease of the Muslim population in the district of Priador from over 49,000 to just over 6,000. The Bosnian Serb mayor of Priador, Marko Pavic, who visited the site in early November, told our reporters. I cannot react differently than as a human and the mayor and feel sorry for all the victims who were killed in the war, as well as the victims that were found in Tomasica, and to express condolences to their families. However, he stopped short of acknowledging the site as proof of ethnic cleansing. This was a matter for the court to decide. Emir Hodžić's brother and father were inmates of the Omaska concentration camp. Since the end of the war, he has been campaigning tirelessly for full recognition of the war's civilian victims. It's reopening of old wounds. Uh, the situation in Priador has, since the since the war, has always been tense. Um, as, as you know, there are no memorials at all for for civil victims, and uh, all. Uh, victims uh, in Prieto were civil. In this photo, Emir protests the crimes committed against women in Prieto during the war. He stands alone, as a larger demonstration was banned by Mr. Pavic, as it would harm the city's reputation. But Emir is not alone. Since 2004, Kamal Pavanic, an Omaska concentration camp survivor, has been campaigning to erect a memorial on the site of the former camp and in the town of Priador. The current mayor, Marko Pavic, who's been in power for more than eight years, has always been against raising memorials to non-Serbs in town or on site of the Amarska camp. And in the past he has said this is not good for the future of Bosnia, this is not good for the future of Priador. But equally, he has actually issued permits for new memorials to be, bit, to be built to commemorate that of uh, local Serb soldiers. For nearly a decade, people have asked local authorities for permits to install a memorial dedicated to the Muslim and Croat war victims. But so far, none have been granted. We put this question to Mayor Pavic, who replied, Seven years ago, we from Priador requested from the Bosnia and Herzegovina Parliament and the Council of Ministers to adopt the law on marking of all the graves in Bosnia and Herzegovina that existed during the war. We have not yet encountered to the understanding for our initiative, and I think that the pressure on central authorities to make such a law should be made. The nationalist divide, running high amongst Serb, Croat and Bosniak politicians, makes virtually impossible the passing of a common national law regarding war memorials or a shared vision for Bosnia's future. The politicians representing Serbs, Croats and Bosniaks are um, in a state of perpetual sort of conflict about the constitutional arrangement of Bosnia Herzegovina. Because these questions remain unresolved, and Bosnia can't really move forward. Forensic teams are working tirelessly, hoping the evidence will bring peace to the families and also provide answers to questions being asked in the trials in the International Criminal Tribunal for the former Yugoslavia. The depth at which they were buried means that many of the bodies have been preserved in a mummified state and could provide some of the best evidence to prove crimes committed in this area. It is further evidence of 
the genocide took place and it could then be provided evidence in some of those case, ongoing cases uh, where um, people are on trial for genocide or for other, other crimes. So it's a, it's a further example of a very large ca case of mass killing which the sort of um, local people were, were aware of and which certain local officials must have been, must have been complicit in. Witness accounts have already established that the grave originally contained 1,000 bodies. In 1993, this site was robbed and replaced to other site, uh, Yakarina Kosa, where uh, in 2002 we found about 300 names, individual names, and about 375 cases, including also body parts, which been removed from this site. In many of the previously excavated graves, forensic teams had mainly recovered body fragments, as during the war bodies were stolen from large mass graves and moved to secondary sites. The brown soil that you see at this site was brought here in order to cover the, the crime which was committed at this place. Once excavated, the bodies are taken to a nearby morgue for DNA testing. Jafik Nusrat, a concentration camp survivor, now works as a local police officer, collecting evidence on the abduction of bodies. Evidence from the Tomashitsa site is one count of indictment in the trials of Radovan Karadzic, first president of the Republika Srpska, and his chief of staff, Ratko Mladic. They stand accused of genocide and crimes against humanity in eight municipalities, other than that of Srebrenica, where over 8,000 Bosniak men were killed during the war. The trial chamber received evidence that in meetings with Karadzic, quote, it had been decided that one-third of Muslims would be killed, one-third would be converted to the Orthodox religion, and a third will live on their own, unquote. And thus all Muslims would disappear from Bosnia. In 2012, the Appeals Chamber dismissed the count of genocide in the municipality of Priador on the basis that the prosecution was incapable of proving certain types of genocidal acts, as well as relevant genocidal intent by Karadzic. The Appeals Chamber unanimously reinstated this count on July the 11th. Tomashitsa in itself is not approved that genocide happened, but Tomashitsa actually helps to, to fill the jigsaw. It opens a lot of political questions. Who was, who, because there were at least 200, 200 people that had to be uh, uh, mobilized for uh, digging that mass grave itself. Who did that? You know, who's responsible? The Hague has sentenced 16 Bosnian Serbs to a total of 230 years in prison for atrocities in the Priador area where the Tomashitsa site is situated. But not all mass graves have been found in the area, and many perpetrators remain at large. We have so many persons which were involved in, in, in these things, who are now famous politicians. One of them is a family, one of them is a parliament member, who, came, who is coming from here. How it was possible that he doesn't know anything, and at this period he was an officer of the Serbian army from this area. If we want to build a better society, we have to admit the truth. The war has been moved from battlefields to people's homes to people's heads, because privately people talk about the, these things all the time. 
and I can never forget what happened to me. Many in the international community feel the time has come for the people of Bosnia to move on. If there are going to be memorials, let there be memorials. But the real memorial to those who died is to create a Bosnia and Herzegovina in which this can never happen again. But for those who have returned, the past still resonates strongly. I don't know how, what to, to tell. It, it looked like some kind of finale, you know. After so many years, our majority of our family members will be identified and buried. And but for the new generations, we don't have any uh, futures here, especially for the, for the children of those who are actually here. We want justice. So, I mean, there were war crimes committed on, on the other side as well, you know, and we want those people, we want those responsible, you know, found. We want memorials for, for Serb civil victims in town of Konyas, for example. We want that because it's human, and we will get there.